How you doing, everybody? It's your boy, Wardy, and as you see, we're back at it talking about the Amazons, and we're also back at it getting into another New York Metropolitan report that has the Mets in contact with multiple relievers this offseason, all of which that I'm personally in favor of, one of which that I spoke about greatly over the past week or so that I would absolutely love to see in Queens, so we're going to get into breaking down these three pitchers from this most recent report, what it means for the Mets as they're trying to rectify this bullpen, round it out for the 2024 calendar season, what are the pros, what are the cons, what is the likelihood on likelihood of said relievers landing in queens and so much more but before i do all that make sure to smash that like and subscribe button for your boy it's the easiest and best way to support the channel thank you guys all so much in advance for helping us get to 25,000 subscribers our next short-term goal which we'll be doing a big channel giveaway when that happens we're just a couple hundred subs away so make sure you smash those buns really does mean a lot and also thank you all so much in advance too for hearing from today's video sponsor bet you as america's favorite sports book where you can bet on everything anytime Sportsbook, casino, horse racing, live betting, and more. We have the best bonuses in the industry. That's right, get a 125% sign-up bonus. And to celebrate our 30-year anniversary, we are giving up to 30 risk-free bets, a truck, Super Bowl tickets, and more. Don't miss out. Play smart. Join now. BetUS, where the game begins. Shout out once more to BetUS for being a great sponsor on the channel. Click the link in the description so that way you too get 125% boost with your first deposit. So if you deposit 100 bucks, you automatically get 225 to work with. Is that easy? BetUS is safe, secure, and reliable and has all your NFL uh, betting needs, NHL, NBA, whatever your heart desires in this current sports betting space. So if say you're looking for NFL playoffs, here you go. You got some of the key matchups. I'm a Steelers fan, so I'm beyond cautiously optimistic with my first matchup here against the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo. We'll see what happens. I'm just happy to even be in there because the Steelers, for a good portion of the season, had no right to even be considered as a playoff contender. But again, wherever you stand in your sports fandom, if you're into sports betting, make sure to check out BetUS today by clicking the link and stay tuned. As we get close to the MLB regular season, we're going to be doing unique Wardy and Wham parlays throughout the year, so that way you can see my three-pick parlay. Maybe Jeff McHitts on two or more hits, Pete Alonso with two or more bases, Kodai Sango with seven or more strikeouts. Be on the lookout for those fun parlay picks, and I'll see you there and once more shout about us as always but guys i want to know your initial reactions thoughts comments questions and concerns to the lace that the mets are connected to multiple relievers here and let's get into the report as it stems here from sny saying the following the mets are reportedly looking at relievers um wandy peralta among others for this MLB for Asian class. So, of course, I want to know your initial reactions down below because for me, I'm very happy about this because once you go into said article, it describes not only Wandy Peralta as a current target for the Met, Met, uh, Mets, but also Brent Suter and to keep an eye on John Brebbia. All guys that make plenty sense for this New York Metropolitan bullpen. All guys that I will not scoff at whatsoever if they come here in Queens. And even when it comes to Wani Peralta, I know you're going to have some fans saying, great, another Yankee has been farthest thing from the truth. Just because he was a longtime Yank doesn't mean he's going to come into Queens or go anywhere else and say be horrendous. He had a really, really solid season this past year. He was tremendous in 2022. He's been a pretty consistent veteran southpaw that we'll get into shortly. But I want to start today's video with the guy that you see in the highlights here because he he is one of my personal favorite relievers available in said market right now, and that is none other than, yes, Brent Suter. Brent Suter, I broke down just over a week ago or so, not only him, but Matt Moore, two southpaws that could make a lot of sense for this Mets bullpen. That video is over 11,000 views. You guys have probably checked it out. If you haven't already, please make sure to do so as I did a thorough breakdown of both pitchers. But to elaborate a little bit more on Brent Suter, why does he make so much sense? He is a crafty southpaw, not known for hard, you know, hard throwing whatsoever, but known for the beautiful breaking and off-speed pitches where he sees plenty swing and miss. He gets a lot of ground ball outs. He's exactly the type of reliever I would like to see in said bullpen, along with a fellow reliever and the likes of Brooks Raley. And something that both Brooks Raley and Brent Suter have in common, these guys have started games before. Brent Suter even opened a couple games for the, uh, not the Milwaukee Brewers, but rather the Colorado Rockies this season. And speaking of the Brewers, was a longtime Milwaukee Brewer in which David Stearns knows him better than any other exec in baseball outside of the Brewers and Rockies organization. They have a very good relationship. This guy is also famously known for doing Jim Carrey impressions throughout in the dugout throughout the 
season. Absolutely hilarious. Love the vibes. Relievers always have awesome personalities, and that is certainly the case here with Brent Suter. But you look at the stat line down below. What the Colorado Rockies last season, mind you, his first and likely only year in Colorado after spending a large portion of his career with the Milwaukee Brewers, just under 70 innings pitch, a 3.38 year array, a 3.18 expected year array, a 4.41 SI year array. Loving everything I'm seeing from Brent Suter. And when you get into a little bit more on his arsenal, it is beyond unique. You have, of course, the forcing fastball, the sinker, the changeup, and the slider. But his two best pitches, in my opinion, from what we're seeing through the stats, is the changeup and slider. The changeup, a 171 opponent batting average. The slider, a 143. Needs to work on a little bit of the sinker because it had a high contact rate but a low slug. And same thing can be said with the forcing fastball. Not as bad as the sinker last year, but again, got to hit around a decent amount. And when you look at Suter's numbers through baseball savant here, 86 percentile on off-speed run value, expected year rate, 88 percentile, expected batting average, 68 percentile, average exit velocity, 100 percentile. As much as this guy throws soft, no one is able to hit him hard, and that is very important for a bullpen. Barrel percentage, 97 percentile. Hard hit percentage, 99 percentile. Ground ball percentage, 72 percentile. Extension, 99 percentile. Again, the K, the whip percentage, all that stuff is really down, but that's okay because that's not what he's known for. He's not known to give you high strikeout stuff. What he's known is to get nice swing to miss and a lot of ground ball outs with those off-speed and breaking pitches. That is what Brent Suter can bring to the Mets. You know, he's at 34 years of age right now, but still very effective on, say, a one or multi year deal for this club. I would love to see him rekindle that relationship with David Stearns to have another potentially dominant southpaw in this bullpen. Not in the sense of overwhelming stuff with the velocity, but dominance in the sense of being consistent by getting quality outs every single time you're out there. That is what Brent Sear presents to you, and that is why I would love to see him here in Queens. That's why I've been a heavy advocate for his. I truly hope that David Stearns can get the job done and bring back his former player during the time in the Milwaukee Brewers. Brent Suter, a guy to keep an eye on this offseason as he is one of the more desired names currently in the free agent market when evaluating Southpaw relief pitchers. But now let's go from Brent Suter to another Southpaw. Again, another guy that I'm very much in favor of will not scoff at the notion if the Mets go out of their way and do in fact land him and that is in fact Wandy Peralta as you see here. Wandy, again, a longtime New York Yankee is coming off of another very solid season where the expected numbers aren't all that great, but he did what he needed to do to get the outs and have a 2.8 year array and 63 games for the New York Yankees this past season. A 4.7 expected year rate, a 4.44 SI array, very similar there that we see uh, with someone like Brent Suter. And Wani, there are so many aspects to his game that intrigue me. You look at his 2022 numbers through baseball savant, he was quite literally one of the best relievers in all baseball. We're talking the 80, 90 plus percentiles in every single statistic. Here in 2023, had a little bit more of inconsistency that is something to keep in mind with someone like Wani because you look at Wani, it's especially, you know, his K per nine, his walks per nine, that has been the biggest gripe. He had an 8.5 K per nine this past season, which was the best of his career, but a, a terrible five walks per nine for Wani Peralta. So he has a problem, you know, keeping guys off the bags. We've seen that, you know, this is, it reminds me of Joely Rodriguez, another former Southpaw uh, reliever for the Yanks, where high walk rate, and unfortunately the Mets weren't able to get him right. Wani Peralta, why am I not overly concerned with the walk rate? It's because that is pretty much an anomaly from what his year-by-year -year norms have been over the five, six, seven seasons. He's usually sitting right around, you know, two and a half to three plus walks per nine, and that is something that I think the Mets can certainly work with and there are appealing aspects here to Wandy's game. You know, you look at the change of the fastball and the slider. That is his pitch mix and the sinker that he has going on right now. When looking at opponent batting average, no one hit his four-seam fastball last year, albeit he only threw it around 50 times, but literally not one single hit on that pitch all season long. Change up 185 expected batting average, 219 average from the sinker, a 238 from the slider. You know, the only issue that we really seen with the slider is that slugging is at a 667 last season. So when he was throwing it, he was getting barreled pretty hard in doing so. But looking at the splits here in his numbers, you know, 82nd percentile in off-speed run value, 73rd percentile in fastball run value, breaking run value, 21 percentile, expected year rate, 28 percentile, not great. Fastball velo, 80 percentile, because he sits 96, 97, 98 on the gun with the heater. Average exit velo, 88 percentile, chase percentage, 86 percentile, whip percentage, 75 percentile, barrel percentage, hard hit percentage, grab ball percentage, all strong, well above average, K percentage, just below average. Average, but Wandy, why does he make sense for the Mets? 
one, to have another stop on this pen that can throw heat, something that you don't really get with Brooks really whatsoever. He's more known for the off-speed breaking stuff. So you have that different mix, even though these are two lefties in the pen for you. Of course, being a guy that's been in New York for as long as he's been, rekindling that relationship with Carlos Mendoza certainly wouldn't hurt. And we know that David Stearns loves the idea of bringing in guys that already have previous experience in big markets, whether that's with the Mets, the Yankees, the Red Sox, whoever it may be. He likes guys that can handle the spotlight and have proven in the years past. And Wandy has certainly done his part with the New York Yankees. Again, not perfect. The walk rate I certainly don't love. But the beauty about walk rates is that they fluctuate quite a bit with relievers. Let's not forget Adam Ottavino, when he signed with the Mets, had a four walks per nine. His first year with the Mets, right around not even a two walks per nine or just right around a flat two. David Robertson, when he signed with the Mets, had right around a five walks per nine with the Mets. Uh, pardon me, prior to the Mets in his season with the Chicago Cubs and the Philadelphia Phillies, come the Mets, and he was absolutely fantastic. So again, do not buy in too much, in my opinion, on the walk rates with relievers, as long as they're not showing consistently a year-by-year -year basis, they're sitting around a five walk per nine, then that's that's where it's an issue. But in the case here of Juan Peralta, it feels like that's a little bit more of an anomaly. I'd expect him to get back into that, you know, whether it's three and a half to north of four walks per nine at absolute worst hopefully for the 2024 season wherever he may land but again given his relationship with Carlos Mendoza the ability to play in the big market the spotlight there's a lot of appealing aspects here to Juan Peralta and his game but now, last but not least let's get into the finer final player of discussion here and that is John Brebbia another very interesting reliever option that I'm happy to see the Mets connected to because something that stood out to me about Brebbia versus some other relievers is again his ability to spot start this is another guy that can come in in a unique situation for the Mets and be utilized in various ways. Now, Brebby is, of course, not a guy that you're expected if he's going to start a game to pitch deep into the game whatsoever. But again, just a guy that can come in and help spot start for you. And bear with me one second because I'm realizing that the statistics here with Brebby are a little bit lower than they should be. So let me raise that right there. There you go. How you doing? 40 games, just under 40 innings this past season. A 3.99 year rate for the veteran right-hander in his final year with the San Francisco Giants. A 3.33 expected year rate. A 3.64 SI year rate. I like a lot of what I'm seeing there from Brebbia. He had a career best 11K per nine this past season, albeit only 40 games, and did start 10 games there for the San Francisco Giants. So what does that mean? That means he came in and was a spot starter. Remember when Aaron Loop spot started a game against the Pittsburgh Pirates and which I was actually in attendance for, believe it or not. Imagine that, but on a little bit more of a frequent basis we saw last season with the likes of your Brebbia. Shamanaya, same thing. Manaya was utilized as both a reliever and a starter. Brebbia was not stretched out as a starter much this season, but was able to start games when needed for San Fran to, prevent to, uh, to present different looks and things of that nature. A lot of aspects to his game that I find very appealing as well, but he's really just a slider fastball guy. He's pretty much a two-pitch mix, but you look at the numbers, no one has been really hitting those two pitches. You know, the slider worked really well last season, a 227 batting average. The slugging was high, so you have to worry about the ability to get barrel there, so location will be key with Brebby on the slider, but a 200 batting average for the four-seam fastball, the slug at a whopping 236. So even though the heater for Brebby, you know, is right around 95, 96, touching, you know, high 90s on the gun, he gets a lot of swing and miss. It's certainly deceptive. And I like that here for Brebbia and what he can present to the New York Mets with this two-pitch mix. Again, another guy that can eat quality aims for you, a guy that can utilize in both low and high leverage situations. However you want to go about it, just add John Brebbia to the mix of another quality MLB arm that would certainly help this Mets bullpen. And similar to Brent Suter, has certainly an extroverted personality. He's a hilarious guy in the dugout as well. as known for, you know, talking about all different random stuff and having fun with it. So overall, I like a lot of what the Mets are targeting here and said relievers and especially in the case of Brent Suter a guy that I've been personally a heavy advocate for I would love to see happen so Brevia, Wandy, and Suter are the latest relievers connected to the New York Mets will they sign either of them will they land either of them we will soon find out but Mets fans I want to know what is your biggest takeaway from today's video which reliever out of the three would you maybe personally like most to come in Queens would you like two out of the three do you want all three out of three even though that that is more than likely not going to happen whatever your thoughts are drop them down below and again thank you all so much for watching stay tuned for consistent coverage on all things the Mets all offseason long check out my previous video on Matt Moore and Brent Suter if you haven't already check out the previous content we did a live show last night completing the Mets 2024 offseason myself and fantastic MLB YouTuber Jolly Olive we went through each position for the Mets right now catcher all the way there to the bullpen and broke it down where the Mets currently have what players are in those positions how are they projecting for the upcoming season and the areas of need in DH uh, bullpen 
those areas starting rotation as well. We address guys externally that still could be a fit for them to acquire in the free agent market or via trade. So make sure to check it out. Again, thank you guys once more. And as always, let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.